Hello everyone, Jeff Montgomery here from Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Professional gunsmith uh, with another video for you. So, um, a recent comment has been brought to my attention on one of the last video series I made. And you know, I'm not, I'm not new to YouTube. Uh, I've been watching YouTube since its inception way, way back, 12, whatever, however long it's been on. I mean, I've been a fan of YouTube. I really love it. It's an incredibly great resource. I try to take the comments in stride and not get uh, worked up about it. But there are some times where I'm just like, you know what? Screw this guy. Um, you know, this is a professional business. This is my livelihood. So I just want to make, I want to set the record straight, right? I don't even know if the guy that's made the comment is going to see this or not. But uh, I just want to clarify some things to avoid any bad reputation kind of thing, especially this early in the game. So the comment had to do with threading, uh, one of my videos that I was threading a barrel in. And uh, he said some smart ass thing like, oh, you're not using a, a 60 degree fishtail gauge for your threading. Amazing how you can set it to that by your eye. You must have the best vision or some BS like that, right? If I filmed every single second of these videos, they'd be three hours long and no one's going to watch them, right? I got I to gotta cut stuff out. I got to edit these things. So anyway, I just thought I'd go over my setup for a thread, right? So I have a job here. I got to thread this, this muzzle. Um, it's going to be threaded half 28. So I just want to show, I'm going to show what I don't show, right? So, so here we go. We're going we're gonna to set this up for threading. The, the correct way. You know, I've been doing this for 10 years now, and um, to get a comment like that just kind of grinds my gears a little bit, as would any professional. So, you know, again, I will be the first to admit my videos are not the best, but, uh, you know, <laughs> just to clear the, clear the record here. So, what we got here is a 60 degree insertable threading tool 60 degree meaning the angle here on the tip and this will cut a standard unified 60 degree thread right so the gauge in question is right here you know i've, I've got one i use it i didn't think it would be very uh beneficial or exciting to put in the video so i didn't but you know here here we go here's your this one's made by SPI, and I'm sure people will say, oh, those are pieces of crap, blah, 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 blah. You need a steroid or a minotoia. Holy crap, it's got a 60 degree angle. What else do you need? So what this is used for is either grinding your own bit or setting a tool up to a piece of stock that you're going to be machining, right? It also doubles as a little bit of a, a tiny little ruler. It's got little things there. Oh, what else? You know, it's made in the USA, so that's kind of cool. And then let's see on the back, you've got your double depth. So you've got a chart with the double depth of all these threads, right? For your American national thread. So the first thing to do with threading, essentially you've got a compound rest on a lathe, a cross slide and an apron or a carriage. We need to set this up properly for the job at hand, right? All right, so my compound rest has two opposing rather large cap socket head screws that allow one to rotate the compound rest to any angle you desire. For this particular job, we need 29 and a half degrees off of here. So we'll call it 30. And there are graduation marks on the compound rest. A big mistake a lot of newbies make is set it to 29 and a half here. That is incorrect. It's off the wrong plane. We want it off of this. Here, because we're doing the work here, not straight ahead. Okay, so we'll just clear the air there. So we need to come in here and set this at 29 and a half degrees. And you know, if you watch Joe Pye's video on threading, he's got an extremely good video about this. You don't have to be dead nuts on 29 and a half. As long as you're a little bit past 30 in this direction, You'll be fine. I've been cutting threads again for 10 years. I mean, come on. 
you think if there was a problem, <laughs> this is wrong. So we're going to lock it in 29 and a half degrees ish. Anything under 30 between 29 and 30 is fine. We don't need to get out of it like a laser protractor or some crazy stuff like that. So with that set, <clears throat> now that allows us to use the compound to feed into the work at 29 and a half degrees, right? Half the degree of the 60 degree thread. So that means the cutting tool is going to be cutting on primarily the, the leading edge of the tool. And it's going to be incrementally deeper and deeper and deeper until you achieve the, the double depth, essentially, of your thread. What's double depth, you ask? Well, I'm not going to get into this. This isn't like a school here, right? I'm just showing you guys how I do this so that there's no, no uh, doubt or question here that I know what the heck I'm doing. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave the tool post loose. We're going to bring the tool, the cutting tool, close to the workpiece. How you use this, you're going to back off, you're going to set your gauge squarely against the workpiece that you're threading, right? You're going to then bring your cutting tool into the gauge, like so. Holding the gauge firmly against the workpiece, we're going to come in with the tool like that. We're going to look through to see if there's any light gap between either side. In this case, there is not. This means the tool is squarely set to the workpiece for 60 degree cutting, for threading, essentially, right? Okay, see, it stays. Look at that. We got no light gap between the workpiece or the gauge. Now, if you know anything about rifle barrels, you know this is tapered slightly, right? So we're gonna back off just a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hold this squarely against the cutting bit. And then these two little legs, they can actually be squared up to the chuck. So that's what we're gonna do to double check this. We're gonna come in. Hold that against the cutting tool and against the chuck face. And look at that. Both legs are sitting flush and flat against the chuck face. And the tool is square to the workpiece still. Right? So you can't really rely on this because it's tapered. This is exaggerated, but that's what it would look like. So that would be wrong. There are other ways to do this as well. I'm not going to get into it. What I want to show you here is that I actually do the proper way for threading. So this is how we set the machine up, okay? Again, I just, again, just want to clear the air. I, I uh, take great pride in my work, and um, the rifles speak for themselves. They shoot for themselves, if you will. So um, talk to any of my customers. Um, pick up any of the rifles that I've chambered new barrels for or blueprinted or, or whatever. They all shoot half a moy or better off a of bench, right? Guaranteed. Uh, everyone with, uh, that have subscribed so far and watched the videos uh, left positive comments or nice comments. Thank you so much. Um, truly appreciate that. The channel's growing really well. Um, we're doing great. Uh, staying real busy here in the shop. Um, cranking out great rifles. So, again, thank you so much for everyone that have actually spent the time to watch the videos, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Regardless, <laughs> rest assured, if you're having me thread your barrel, it's going to be done properly, carefully, accurately, uh, and all that good stuff. So, again, thank you very much. Uh, see you on the next one.